and I got a degree in masturbating. What? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, this made me laugh because this guy's screen name. Uh, this graph about college degree attainment amongst different Asian groups in America is going viral right now, and we got to talk about it. Yeah, Jackfruit posted this as well as some other Instagrams, and there was a healthy debate in the comment section about whether or not college degree attainment is as necessary as the Asian culture stereotypically makes it out to be. Joining us for this debate today, we've got one of the original Hot Pop Boys from L.A., Nelson Chan. What's going on, man? With me not coming from a well-educated background and family, I think it's interesting for me to give my perspective. For sure, topic. for sure, absolutely. I mean, I think there's a really, really big variance despite the larger stereotype in America that all Asians come from educated families and are mathletes and super brainiacs. Obviously, there's a lot of different shades to it despite what's put out in the media. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Andrew, let's just get into it. What does this graph say and has it been verified by like scientific studies? All right, so this graph, when it was posted, it didn't have any sources linked to it, so I had to double check where they got the graph from. But yes, it is pretty much the same numbers as these other surveys from 2016 and I think 2020. Um, so basically, this graph goes as follows, guys. 78% of Taiwanese Americans have bachelor or higher degrees, all right? Then it goes to Indian, Pakistani, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Indonesian, Filipino, Bangladeshi, Nepalese, Thai, Vietnamese, Hmong, Burmese, Cambodian, Laotian. So obviously, a lot of the reactions, especially on the Asian pages, are coming from Southeast Asians who are like, Oh, whoa, like they have a range of reactions. Some of them are very proud that they were able to go to college. Some people are like, oh, we got to do better. And some people are like, ah, nah, we don't need college for us. So, of course, let's go through it. Yeah. I mean, I think the very first comment uh, was explaining it. Somebody said, you know, the ones at the bottom come here on immigration based routes and intentions, while the top ones are usually those who got to work, got some work studies visas. So, a majority of them are here for a degree. Obviously, they have a higher percentage. I think what this person is pointing to, are that immigration waves and patterns and pathways are absolutely 100% different for every Asian group. Basically, yeah. Andrew, long story short, every Asian group, and there's even more that weren't listed on this study, have a different journey to the West. Mm -hmm. Right. I yep. mean, a lot of these Asians, uh, I don't want to say a lot, but I mean, a good portion of Taiwanese and a lot of the Indian um uh, people who have high degrees, they already came over with some degree well, from their and country. And it's possible that they were able to immigrate due to a student or a work yeah. visa as a brain worker, right? But I do, of course, that doesn't account for everybody. A lot of uh, people from all these countries come over with no money and have made it and gone to college right. and, and done their thing. And there's so course. many like variants in different situations because you know how like you can come over with no money, but you're educated. And then some people come over with no money and they're not educated. Some people come over with a lot of money and they're not mm -hmm. educated. There's so much variability. Somebody also said, that family wealth makes a big amount of difference too. A lot of Asian people need to hustle and pay bills and do not have time and money for college. Yeah, I mean, if you look at a lot of the groups towards the bottom, uh, some of those are refugee groups, you know? So of course it's tough to, yeah, I mean, you're just, you're coming here trying to survive, opening up small businesses. However, I will say a lot of Vietnamese, they are known for their entrepreneurship. They open a lot of yeah. small businesses. To be honest, I think a lot of people were surprised that Vietnamese only was at 30%, right? Well, I was actually very surprised at it being that low. And I think the reason is, is because a lot of people just anecdotally in their life probably know a financially successful Vietnamese person because like we said, the, almost like the ultimate hustlers, man. And just like entrepreneurs. They know, entrepreneurs. How, to money, they know how to make money, man. They know how to make money. And this was the first comment. Jock Fruit, which I actually believe posted this and is run by Vietnamese people said, Vietnamese don't need degrees. They open up businesses, full restaurants, coffee shops, and nail salons. Lawns. And someone said, hey, man, tattoo shops. And then somebody came in and said, Johnny, dang, man. And then somebody else <laughs> said, street smarts over book smarts. And then obviously somebody else said, Vietnamese are huge entrepreneurs. Yeah, no, sure. and, and I think if you look at the statistics, we'll pop them up that Vietnamese do own a lot of businesses in America. They're uh, very enterprising people. Oh, I think they have the highest rate of entrepreneurs. Now, obviously, there's a lot of good jobs if you work for, you know, in medicine and techs like that, uh, where you do require degrees. But I think America happens to be a great country for entrepreneurship and running and, small businesses. And, and I would say anecdotally, uh, we have a lot of Vietnamese friends. And a lot of our Vietnamese friends, they are a, about the cash flow. Oh, They're just man. about like, hey, man, it makes money. I like it. I have fun with it. I enjoy the work. Hey. Let's do it. Like they're, right, not they're, like, they're like cash flow, man. It doesn't have a degree attached to it, man. No, what? <laughs> we used to have a camera guy who used to work with us, and he was from Vietnam, and he would just be like, yeah, man, nah, man. I, I, I it make money, man. It's all good. Um, someone said, yet somehow all pharmacists at CVS are Vietnamese. Yeah. So here's the interesting part, guys. To be a pharmacist, to go to farm school, you do not need a bachelor's degree. 
right? Because farm school is going to essentially be your degree once you make it through that. So yes, a lot of pharmacists and a lot of farm techs are, uh, you don't need a bachelor's degree to do that. All right, the next comment I believe comes from somebody who is Cambodian. Somebody said, Southeast Asians are lo low due to being refugees from the Vietnam War and putting got put straight into the hoods and the projects when they arrived in America. But let me tell you one thing, they will never get bullied and punked out on the streets like those at the top of the list. Someone said, <laughs> hot take, commendable. And someone said, for real, man, because we fight back to the heart. Um, I mean... Go into that, like, some of those Southeast Asian people are going to be more into the streets, whereas, you know, the people on the top are more in the books, you know? Right, so right. it's like, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you guys know Southeast Asian people, I think on average, and this is a generalization, that they are, like, they're tougher. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, I actually, let's be honest. so I actually had to send this uh, quote to a bunch of my Southeast Asian friends. And there's a variance, right? Some are very, very, like, proper, and some are, like, more uh, doing the, the living life their own way. And basically, you know what they said, Andrew? They said... Uh, Man, it's not fully true because we still do get attacked, but the, just the difference is when we get attacked, we'll fight back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, um, I guess Andrew, true. there was uh, more comments from like Lao people. For example, Andrew Heartbreaker, the Lao rapper, friend of ours, he said, damn, lol, us Lao people need to do better. And then somebody said, to be honest, man, we don't even need it. I got my degree and never even used it. Didn't even realize we was all the way at the bottom, though. What the F? <laughs> Uh, yeah. And there was other comments like echoing this, you know, from people who are like, oh, dang, I kind of made it, but dang, I didn't even know we was that low. Yeah, I would say that the that percentage is surprisingly low, I guess. I guess, I, I, I think that's some, I, I think most people, I guess, based off their stereotypes, they would see like maybe the ranking of this to make sense, but I guess maybe some of the numbers to be a little differently. Yeah, I would say this, um, and this is a comment, I think, on larger, like, the economics of America, Nell, and I get your perspective on this. America is a really interesting country because it's simultaneously the best country to have a degree in because there's all the best tech and medicine here, mm -hmm. which you definitely need a degree for, but it's also the best country to not have a degree in. Mm, like, yep. like, it's almost like for both pathways. It's probably just not a good country if you want to get rich off, like, government, maybe, like, you know, that's, like, the only different. You know what I mean? Like, no, there's no, both. I, I guess there's money in a lot of different lanes in America is what I'm trying to say. For sure. I think with my experience, uh, my perspective is that uh, the degree is like, it's, it's like 50-50. You Depending on what type of career you want to, you know, dive into, whether it's, you know, being a lawyer or, you know, medicine or whatever, those you would like need really hard, you know, studies and get right. a degree. Even in. your GPA but matters, like, yeah, right? Like, I you know I graduated from a four-year college. It took me a while, but, you know, I never really used my degree for anything after that too. So it's like, and then for what I do is like more entrepreneurship, but like, I think in today's time, and especially in LA, you don't really necessarily need to go to four year or need a degree to be successful or make a lot of money, right? I think today's time, getting a degree is kind of overrated. Okay, yeah. I no, mean, I think a that's an interesting degree. perspective and definitely like you have pretty valid points too, yeah, obviously. Like, you know, my parents are, you know, uh, you know, coming from immigrants, uh, family coming to America, they, the highest edu level of education they both had was middle school. Right. right. So my parents, didn't, neither my parents went to high school and then I was never, you know, great in school uh, as well. But like, I'm not saying like I became super successful, but like, I kind of still did something, you know, without having to be like super smart, you know, no, for sure. Absolutely. Like I believe that you're correct in the 2023 economy, certain lanes that don't require a degree, the degree would almost like just be for networking mm -hmm. versus obviously tech and medicine. You need that knowledge. And it also depends in school, what school you go to too, or what now, school you got your degree from. Nelson, you know, so do really you feel like program. a lot of people who come from families who are not maybe super pushy on education, they'll still go to a college just because they know that's kind of like the right thing to do. That's the safer thing. Yeah. To do. They, they want to make their parents proud yeah. by, like, you know, graduating, you know, from college. Right. Yeah. And it does theoretically put you around other people who are also trying to get jobs in the corporate world. Maybe it inspires you to go do the same, but for those people who go through college and are not inspired by the job opportunities and they're like, you know what? I went through that and that actually really wasn't for me. So like, I'm just going to go do yeah. my own thing. This girl said, Andrew, Cambodian with a degree and she looks like this. So someone said, yo, that's Cap. FaceTime me to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, somebody said, actually, you're probably Khmer Chinese. And uh, yeah, this is just a lot of opinions. Like we said, Jackfruit is so crazy because there's just like opinions from everywhere this is definitely different than the comments of like a new york times article uh, you know what i like about this comment section it's very real it's very real people and it's very like southeast asian it's almost like you're peering into how like a lot of Southeast Asians would talk to each other at like maybe a kickback or a barbecue and you're in the conversation now so i think it's funny and i, I think it's like more funny than like maybe if it was like uh, instagram only about like i don't know chinese people maybe i don't know yeah i mean i do think that 
you know, because there is a lot of people who are part Chinese in Southeast Asia. Like, it is true that I guess if you had to stereotypically guess, if you have one parent that's Chinese and one parent that's not, the Chinese one is going to be the one stressing school. Because mm-hmm. Chinese yeah. people love school. But interestingly enough, Andrew, that leads us to our next comment where this girl was like, yeah, I'm Malay and Cantonese. And uh, my parents keep telling me to get my grad degree, even though I like, don't even need it at all. So this is almost the argument against over-education, right? Because it's time, it's money, it's effort, and theoretically you're deviating from like a path that you're already sure of, Andrew. What, what do you think about that argument? That like, you know, there can be parents that are over-reliant on the degrees in education. Well, maybe I think this person, a lot of people who oftentimes do get grad degrees, their parents like maybe went to some type of schooling. So their parents went to school to become successful. So that's how they know that you're going to become successful. So of course they stress that to you. But if your parents became successful without school, I think possibly and usually maybe they won't stress school as much. So it kind of depends on the parents and how they made it. Yeah, the family background matters a lot. Like we said, I know some people who got rich or like not rich, but like, upper middle class doing landscaping. Some people who became rich doing more like contract merchant middleman, sort of like factory import export. And then obviously people have a variety of levels of success working corporate. You know what I mean? Like it depends on how high they wrote uh, wrote up the ladder, I guess the the lucrativeness of that that specialization. Do you think that telling kids to get an undergrad degree and then a postgraduate degree and maybe even after go a PhD is a little bit like old school basketball coaching. You know, old school basketball sets, you had to move the rock five times Mm -hmm. To, to, oh, to get pass the rock yeah, 10 to, times yeah, before yeah, you get a shot up. 10 to 5 times to get a shot. But nowadays, it's different. So it's like, Andrew, the logic between, between passing the rock five times on an offensive scheme, it's not wrong, right? Yeah. But it's just outdated. Yeah, it is. It's like in today's time, it's like once you have a first or second op- really good option, you should take it. Moving on, Andrew, this uh, person was complaining about, obviously, uh, certain groups not even getting listed on here. Somebody said, man, people didn't even make the list. Man, we are a minority of minorities. Nobody ever pays attention to us. Someone said, Cham people are not in these lists. Somebody said, where are Mongolians, Bhutanese, Tibetans, Sri Lankans? Mm, obviously, yeah. uh, Thai Dom. There was like, Thai yeah, there was a ton of groups that got left off. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think if you look at different other surveys, uh, Bhutanese and, and these type of populations will will show up. Like, especially if you just surveyed uh, New York, you would actually see even more types of Asians possibly. But yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of Asian groups, to be honest, they're not, they don't even have a the large enough size, numbers. Right? Yeah, yeah, they don't have the sample size for, for people to and survey. Not... What? Not that it's not important. And one though. thing I want to point out, because uh, Pakistani was actually super high on this list, right? right. And a lot of people mm-hmm. may be like, oh, like I didn't expect that, right? But it's like, there has a lot to do with like who's coming over from that country, right? Like not every immigrant population from a country is representative of that country. It could just be representative of who from that country was allowed to immigrate. Right. So it's almost like a very selective or self-selective mm-hmm. population. Right. Um, Moving on, somebody said, uh, hey, man, you guys, if you guys don't have college degrees, don't worry, because I have two masters, and uh, I'm just a teacher, and I'm still poor as poor AF. And someone said, yeah, man, my Cambodian homie is a truck driver that only has a GED, and he has, like, three cars and his own place that he owns, and he got, like, luxury whips. Mm. And somebody else said, yeah, man, I just did the college thing for a year. It wasn't for me. I got into the trades and real estate. And I make most more money than most of my college grad buddies, yeah. whatever works for you. So this was what I'm saying, yeah. sort of like, uh, yeah. Based yeah. on what I, I did, that pretty much proves what I said earlier about like, you don't necessarily need a degree to make a lot of money or be successful. There's a lot of, you know, different types of, you know, fields that you could dive into to, you know, be successful in, in that. Yeah. And you know what, even now, I mean, I met some people who are uh, doing software engineering and they didn't even go to college for it. Like they just took right, a, you, they took coding a, boot camps, right? Took, which used yeah, to be frowned upon, but yeah. yeah, they take these boot camps that are, are do take three or four months, right? But then they come out and they can make a lot of money. Yeah, so. I think it's sort of like filmmaking. People used to hire filmmakers from filmmaking school, but now it's just like, yo, how many projects did you get done? I think uh, people are maybe kind of coming to terms with, like to your point, to this is supporting you now, like some of the educational systems are a little bit like too generalized. You know what I mean? Like you learn a lot of general yeah. education in school, but that's yeah. not like necessarily specifically execution IRL in that given specialty. Exactly. Uh, a lot of prerequisite, uh, prerequisites that you take during college is like not necessarily for your life at right. all. Right. Somebody <laughs> said real talk college is even worth it unless you're going to the specialty field. That's why East Asians and South Asians excel in tech and medical, but you just got to focus on what you want to do. Mm. Yeah. And then there's a comment from uh, some Filipinos that were like, hey, the Filipinos would even be higher on this list if they took in nursing degrees. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, 
I, I think nursing degrees, I don't know if they count in this because I think they do because it's Bachelor of Science of Nursing. So yeah. does that count as a bachelor? It would, right? Coming to defense of degrees though, Andrew, because I do not want to just be a contrarian channel for the, for the sake of it. Someone said, I have my BS in mechanical engineering. I'm about to get my MS in industrial and systems engineering. I don't think you need a degree to be successful, but it is pretty hard these days to make it without one. If you have work ethic and hustle though, go for it. It's about leveraging your opportunities. I do think that getting a degree in something difficult like STEM related, it does up your probabilities because like yeah, if you sure. can get a degree in something difficult and execute a difficult job like engineering or uh, tech like or medicine, like you can get a almost always guaranteed at least a middle level job. Yeah, no, I mean, let's be honest. Um, I mean, getting put into a school system and trying hard, you're linking with professors, they have networking opportunities, you get to be trained kind of like in the way that probably the job works. Um, so, but again, if you are a super big hustler and you're smart yourself, I mean, oftentimes you'll figure out a different way because, yeah. because the, the knowledge is out there on how to do it. Like there's literally websites and YouTube videos and Reddit forums that will tell you how someone did it without the degree. Yeah, I think a lot of it is like how you spend your time in college too, right? Like yep. some people, they just like party, they like do this, they do that. And they're just not really like focusing on using the college time to build up their career life. They're just using it on the social side. You should use it for both. But obviously if you're going to prioritize one realistically to make the most out of college, you should focus on a career building. Uh, someone said, yeah, Andrew, the nursing certification would see the Filipino numbers rise up, but also uh, I'd like to get a BS in uh, Balut studies. <laughs> so just a, just a classic silly response. <laughs> Somebody also said, as a Filipino nurse myself, I can guarantee that at least half our listed percentage of bachelors are, are bachelors in science in nursing, a BSN. Mm. Andrew, uh, moving on. Somebody said, uh, I'm Viet and I got a degree in masturbating. What? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, this made me laugh because this guy's screen name, uh, the picture had a picture of Korean Rick Yoon p p playing the hustler Johnny Tran in Fast and Furious. Of course, Andrew, there was a bunch of other comments basically saying, you know, I'm Laotian or Laotian, and I'm representing the 16% of Laotians with my masters. Yo, my dad is a Cambodian refugee. My mom is Chinese and Indonesian, but I was able to make it. I got two masters. I'm doing well for myself. I'm able to help out my parents. So basically, other people were coming in there with success stories to show people. It's like, yeah, like, don't be discouraged by these macro statistics. I went and did well for myself and got educated or I still did well for myself and I didn't get educated. Exactly. It all depends on what success means to you too. If it's just monetary, we already know in America, this is a great place to be a hustler, you know, and you, and you don't need a degree for that. So, uh, David, what are some of the funnier comments? Because obviously, you know, the conversation got very deep, but also very light hearted at the same time. Yeah. I mean, somebody said, uh, this is like a Hennessy scale upside down. <laughs> so, okay. That's it's funny. It's funny. Uh, okay. Somebody said, uh, man, Cambodian is only so low because half of us graduated in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, you got a gangster bachelor degree. Obviously, this is a stereotype, guys. These are jokes made by Cambodians for Cambodians. Um, for me, I think there's two things that are noteworthy. Uh, I saw a comment, Andrew, about college debt. What do you think about that? Because there's a lot of talk nowadays that college is overpriced, yep. not specialized enough to guarantee you a career out of it, and you could end up in debt paying off Loans, even though technically educational loans are lower interest, uh, how much does that play an impact into this? I think that college is very expensive nowadays, but there's also a lot of supplementary or alternative education that you can get. You're talking about vocational careers, yeah, right? Yeah, vocational careers. You can take classes on the side. You can take uh, boot camps. Um, if you're in college, you can... There's always, College, to me, one of the best things about college, especially going into something like a specialized field, is the networking yeah. that you could potentially use from it. However, if you go to a big college and you just make it in there and you just want to do your work, walk in a class and walk out and you think that you're going to get a great job out of it, that is actually not true. You still get out what you put in. So therefore... If you join all the clubs, if you join the networking opportunities, if you join the mentorship programs, do all this and this and kind of uh, utilize college for what it is, I think it is extremely, extremely helpful. However, a lot of people don't. And I think also a lot of people, they got to look at how much debt they're taking on. You know, you have your community college options. Nowadays, you have cheaper four-year options. Obviously, you have your university option that gives you the tailgating at the football game type experience, but then you're incurring a lot more housing and like living costs for food and board. So I just think that people got to calculate and be like, okay, maybe it is 
good to like if I'm not into school, I could just pick the lower price option because I'm going to have a lot less debt. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was talking to a, a girl who wants to go into physical therapy and, uh, you know, she's working two jobs right now. But physical therapy school itself is going to set her back a lot. And I mean, there's just it's it, there's a lot of different options and in getting into that industry without having to go to that amount of school for it. It's like everybody only wanted to become a doctor and you got to go to medical school for it. Obviously, you can be a nurse practitioner. You know, that takes some time, but, you know, you don't have to have the medical degree for that exactly. For so, sure. There's just I, a lot of different ways out yeah, there. Yeah, definitely. I think that this was a good um, post and it sparked a lot of good discussion. I'm sure the discussion could go on for like hours and hours. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Is college overrated? Is it necessary? Or is it underrated? I mean, obviously, I guess the larger macro trend in the Asian American community is obviously a very, very high uh, value on education, which I think ultimately is a good thing, but it just varies on everybody's own personal situation and stats. Um, yeah, make sure you follow Nelson Chan. And uh, until next time, we're the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.